Welcome to Magran's Fork. We're going to go into our combat position, which hopefully has saved properly, right? Yep, there we go. So this will be positioning our melee characters in the front and our ranged characters in the back, with our squishiest mage ranged character being a little bit more in the back. But also, just be careful not to put anyone too close together in case we start off with an AoE. Granted, all this formation stuff completely loses its meaning the moment we start actual combat, in many cases. That's a weird figure. Saw you in the flames. Where'd he go? Oh, he's still there. We just lost line of sight temporarily. Who is this? Mr. Durantz. A statue of Magran, a goddess of flame and war. Dozens of names have been scratched into the stone at her feet. Supplicants seeing, seeking her blessing. West to Gilded Vale, south to Anslog Compass, east to Black Meadow. Alright, does this guy want to talk to us? He hasn't attacked us yet, that's a good sign. Durance. Oh, he's got a face portrait, that's promising. He's, he's gonna be important in some way, presumably. Although, the first two characters that joined my party had portraits too, and they died in a few minutes. <laughs> Squatting at the base of this statue is an incredibly ugly man, with bulging red cheeks raked by pox scars and a scraggly beard. He is sweating, as if he has a fever, but his, his breathing is measured and steady, like a slow push of a blacksmith's bellows. But that comparison feels strange and unwelcome. The next comparison, probably sparked by his grin, is that of a bear trap. And then, out of nowhere, there is a hint of alchemical fire that fades almost as soon as you identify the smell. Come to pray at the statue. The question mark is barely there. As the man makes the statement, the statue takes on a reddish cast, as if one is holding a torch to it, then slowly blossoms into waving flames. This man doesn't turn as the statue blossoms into the fire. The others are welcome, but it's best if just you and I trade words, and your shadows stay quiet. Hands off their weapons, both arcane and steel. It's only you I want to trade words with anyway. His face tenses with his iron bear trap smile, ready to spring. I swear before the whore that is Margaret, no harm will come to you in her shadow. If that's enough of a promise for you. If not... A staff rests easily in his hand. It wasn't there a moment ago. So he, he seems to be some kind of fire mage. Looks like I have two dialogue options I could have picked if I had some knowledge of Magran. Maybe that's one of the origins you can pick or a, a piece of evidence of information you can pick up as you go along. Let's see. Huh, so I can look at three different things. I can say strange choice of, of company, or I can say I didn't catch your name. Let's, let's start off with that. Just, I didn't catch your name, or why you, you want to speak with me. I didn't give it. You probably find names as useless as I do. The names that litter this world like debris are hard enough to wrap around the tongue. And what do they matter? I mean, I don't disagree. It's hard to pronounce half these words, and how do I even remember them half the time? There's so much lore. It's got to be exhausting to actually live in this world sometimes. It's what's beneath the skin and the letters I care about. What burns within. It's more important to me you're a watcher than whatever culture or accent decorates your letters like awkward crowns. Take pride in your actions, not where you hail from. Or how your name rolls off whatever liar's tongue coats it now. The man's staff blossoms with fire for a moment, then the embers settle. If you need a title to hang on me to match your own watcher, then call me Durance. And as you observe souls, I test them. What do you mean? Durance shakes his head. His, he his hand curls tightly on his staff. I can see the questions bubbling up. They're, let, let's burn them away, one by one. I am a missionary. I walk this diseased nation with its heathen. It's people so careless with the spirits of others and their own, watchers among them. Yes, I know you for what you are, and your name doesn't interest me. Names are for honest folk, and you are a crack that shines light from another place. We're meant to travel together, you and I. Saw you in the flames. Not your face, but that soul of yours. All tightened up, like a huntsman's knot. You saw my soul in the flames. 
There's things we can teach each other. If you're in need of answers to your mantle of questions. I don't force my words on anyone other than you. I don't care who walks with you or what their mewling problems and politics are. There's enough howling in the world without me stoking that fire. I won't take from your provisions, don't need much on the road. I can carry my weight, which is considerable. He inhales again, giving you the impression of a blacksmith bellows, and smiles, almost proudly. Many will stand against you. They probably already have, from what I can see. Left their marks, it seems. Like a trail, worming its way behind you. Oh, I think he's talking about my history, where I'm escaping from some past. I hinted that there's people pursuing me. I don't know, I think I, th I, th I, think I said I don't know why. What kind of marks? Disease? Spirit wind? Both could have touched you, yet here you stand. He stares at your face, then into your eyes, almost dully at first, then more intensely. As for disease, not all of us were close to water when the pox hit. But it's no longer a passenger in my flesh. It left its marks as well. But like flames, the pox doesn't strike twice, nor is it catching. If your stone mistress there allows it, then come on. Her? Don't fear her jealousy. Let us see what the road holds, Watcher. Well, we have a new friend, Mr. Durrance. And we're gonna learn with time whether or not we want to keep him around. I feel the need to give at least give him a shot because he knows more... He seems to know more about my situation than even I do. And that could be a useful resource to have around. Let's create more of a regular... They keep resetting my party configurations. Excu excuse me, I do not specifically seek to separate the wolf from me. You, uh, although him trailing in the background might be kind of might kind of make sense. I'll go ahead and set up again. There we go. Now we have now, now I'm flanked by two spellcasters. It looks like with two melee in the front. All right. Is this formation working for me? That's not what I was trying to do at all. Wait a minute. Something mess up here? Just make sure it knows that I want to pick this one. It probably had to reset it when I click on it again. There we go. Melee in front, non-melee in the back. So this guy's interesting. He doesn't seem entirely trustworthy or maybe just not entirely personable. We'll figure it out. He might just be a Morrigan type where they're sort of off-putting, awkward mages that don't aren't so great with people, but they could actually be a force for good still. Or, you know, a, a, something that helps the party to some extent. But we are very quickly filling in this party in. We went from having uh, three people to losing two of those people to immediately gaining three more to add to a total of four now. Friendly? You have a name. It's not a bad sign. Oh. There, that one. Get that one. Ladrana. Uh, well, we have ourselves in some combat now. We can't, we can't just talk, huh? It's not an option. I can't be like, hey, I want to talk to you, like a person would, instead of fucking dying. Let's see, is there a talking mm -hmm. option? Wounding shot. Crucible of the soul. Well, that's new. Let's look at this. The Watcher unravels the vital essence of his or her enemies, gaining endurance in the process. A oh, as, as an AoE, uh, does it have a range? I don't think it has a range. Nope, it's just people that are near you. You can do. You can only use it once per rest, so I have to go camp again before I can use it again. But it it uh, drains. T it does ten burn damage and uh, yeah, ten endurance damage as fire, and gives me, huh, interesting. That's an interesting situation to have. So I believe we're in danger. Let's take a look at Mr. Durance's set because we haven't really had a chance to take a glance at that yet. He's got a basic rod. Rods are the largest of the magical implement implements and can be distinguished from the wands and scepters by the heads on each end. Rods focus and release more energy, more soul energy than wands or scepters. This attribute makes them their blows more powerful, but they recharge and fire more slowly. Oh, he also has a staff. Deceptively simple, quarterstaffs can be powerful weapons in the hands of a skilled combatant. Wielders of this quarterstaff's long re... Wielders can use a quarterstaff's long reach to deliver a crushing blow from behind their allies. 
Oh, it's a two meter range. That's a pretty that's a pretty long weapon actually. Very valuable too. Uh, sixteen to twenty two damage right now. Uh, quite a bit of reach. So it's one point seven meters already. Then he gets one point eight bonus reach from some sort of ability, and burning lash. So he gets he gets a, he gets fire damage modifier, as opposed to this thing, which seems to be used useful for spell casting. Anyway, what kind of spells is he starting off with? Oh, does he not have a grimoire? The other character has a grimoire, right? Yeah. Oh, his is empty. What is he, exactly? Can I look at his character better? Here we go. Oh, he's a priest. Okay. So he's actually more of a melee character than uh, than a spellcaster. Oh, I got thrown off there, because this guy is a wizard. And I, th I thought he was going to be a sorcerer, is was my initial assumption. So he's actually more of a melee character, so gonna go ahead in here and just rearrange this party a little bit it's not gonna apply until I actually enter combat from scratch again but it'll I'm just doing it now while I'm thinking about it so let's figure out how we want to prioritize these groups we have gold packed paladin gold packed paladin and someone named Ludrana we don't know anything about them what's it? she's got dreadlocks I guess let's go make a mess of her organs and things because she's the aggressive here aggressor here Edder, you go ahead and take the first guy. My wolf, Garrix, will take out the back person. Just to distract these people. Durance, when he, once he gets up front, because he's kind of far away right now, we'll join at distracting the front row. Uh, what kind of attacks do we have here? Holy Radiance, once per encounter, creates a field of holy energy around the priest, burning away vessels in the vicinity and regenerating a modest amount of endurance for allies. The power of a priest's holy radiance is modified by how well... Well, uh, how well his or her reputations align with the preferred behaviors of his or her faith. So I'm gonna have to look up this guy's research, this guy's faith, perhaps, to figure out how good this stuff should be. Let's see. So it has a 5.9 radius. It has a friendly AOE of of 11.2. It gives it has endurance. Let's see, 16.8 burn damage. Only vessels frighten. Frightened for 34 seconds. Let's see. So it's it's it burns vessels and heals and helps allies. So I don't I don't know what a vessel is, but I'm thinking no one here is a vessel. So that probably it probably doesn't do any damage, but it should be handy for buffing allies. And if I can do it once per encounter, that means I can do it fairly. Re oh, hello, priest spells. Okay, so the so he just doesn't require. He just doesn't require a grimoire then as a priest because they're all right there. So combat only armor of faith creates a tangible shield of faith, increasing the damage reduction of all allies uh, in the area of effect. It says combat only. Am I not in combat? Do I maybe do I need to wait a brief second for combat to start before I can use it? Maybe. Maybe if I just pa unpause for a brief second. There we go. Now we're in combat. I'll tell my archer to attack this guy to help focus fire and we'll yes. tell Aloth let's see Aloth, Aloth has a few spells to pick from fan of flames is a uh, too close eight let's do start off with just minor missiles let's try to take out this uh, gold packed paladin in the front as fast as possible but back to our new durance friend there we go now he can cast this stuff because we're in combat creates a tangible shield of faith increasing damage reduction of all allies in the area of effect how big is said area of effect uh, three meters ish Plus four damage for all allies. Freaky. That's that could be very badass. Uh, barbs of condemnation. Uh, target takes piercing damage. Uh, punishes a target for their sins, decreasing their deflection, fortitude, reflex, and will. Blessing. A call for divine favor that increases the accuracy and damage for all allies in the area. That could be handy, especially for my. Uh, that could be really handy for my uh, spellcaster type. My I mean my ranger. Maybe this character is more of a back of the group type. I misinterpreted that a bit. Although, uh, yeah. Okay, so, oops. Did not mean to click on that. Can, can I untoggle that? Can I press escape to un- There we go, escape undoes it. Divine Terror. Strikes fear into the hearts of the unworthy, inflicting a penalty to accuracy on all enemies in the area of effect. It's also an AoE. Oh, it has a range of five meters. So that's more handy. 
See, all enemies. It specifically says enemies. I assume these spells don't have friendly fire then. Halt. Commands a single enemy to halt, causing them to temporarily cease all movement. That's weird that it even affects... Wow. Like, like 10 seconds of not moving, too. There's a lot of spells to go through here, isn't there? Uh, did I not... Do I need to close it first? Oh, I have multiple open somehow. Oh, wow. I've been keeping them all open. Uh, I must have hit a cap on how many I can have open. Holy Meditation. The priest clears her mind, spreading the clarity to nearby allies, therefore increasing their concentration and will bonuses. We're getting a lot of, uh... We're getting a lot of spells that are just AoE buffs. It's gonna be hard to keep a lot of some of these straight. Let's see, what's this one to the right here? Holy Radiance, that's the once per encounter one where I just buff people. Has a very clear AoE range, too. Let's see... Uh, Prayer Against Fear. Steals the mind of allies in the area of effect against external fears, granting bonus resistance against attacks and with frightened or terrified afflictions and reducing the duration of any such afflictions currently on the target. So an anti it's like a fear ward. Sorry if there's a lot to go through, but they're really front-loading this stuff on me. I just met... Th I have three brand new characters to try to use. Restore Minor Endurance. Uh, shares generous... Shares a generous portion of the caster's divine strength, restoring a significant amount of endurance to all allies in the area of effect. So that's how I can heal people. If I see their portraits filling up with red, I can help them recover here. Let's take a look at our, at, at our what's his starting ability? Just knockdown. See how simple melee characters can be? It's kind of nice. Okay, so I'll tell Edar to use knockdown on this front guy, with the hope being that we can incapacitate him a bit. And I'm going to try to cast Holy Radiance to help the party out here. That'll probably help. Let's try to keep an eye on him to make sure it's working properly. Uh, auto cast. Oh, auto pause for the cast spell cast happening. All right, holy radiance has happened. Oh my god, this text feed just lost its mind. Okay. Uh, is there anything I want to look at here? Uh, holy radiance has been activated. I don't. It's just combat stuff happening. We can just let it happen. God damn, that just starts happening fast though. So let's have some fun here. What's something cool I can do here? What if I try to terrorize my enemies? Divine Terror. How far can I reach it with this? It's bad for these guys. What if I do it right here? Is that in range? Here, go, 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 go. Oh. Garrix has low endurance. Oh no! Garrix got knocked out. Interestingly, he got knocked out, but he lost no health. So he's not even... There must be a specific ability. Did what did he use to... Wait, auto pause for character death on Garrix. Is it a character death if he has 240 hit points? Oh, I got crit for 28 slash damage. So Garrix just got straight up murdered in like two seconds. Is my is my wolf completely dead? It, it, the the, health, the hit points the hit points haven't even gone down. I'm gonna try to assume that the dog is just knocked out, and that's it. That's going on here. So hopefully he's still he'll still be alive soon. I have a paladin right up in my face right now, which is an all-around bad place for him to be. So, every, I'm gonna say everyone focus on this guy that's getting all up in my in my business, because I should have hobbled him. Let's see, should I just use my AOE on him since he's gonna be since he's up in my face? Fuck it, if he's gonna get up in me, he's gonna pay. He's gonna learn the error of his ways right here, or I'm or I'm not gonna cast it. Can I please cast it? Oh, I oh I just click on it. I don't. I made a mistake of clicking, uh, uh, clicking attack. Here it comes. Fuck you. Alright, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, get away from me. Get away from me. Get away from me. There we go. Let's try to hobble these guys. Just keep them from moving much. Is someone low on endurance now? Now endurance is low on endurance, so go figure. Let's see. Things got chaotic fast, didn't they? Let's see. This immediately got more difficult than it than they usually are. I should be pausing more frequently, probably, is my mistake. Let's see, let's try to knock this one of these guys on, a, on their ass. Uh, huh? Peril should cast... Just focus on this paladin. Yes. You should cast a spell to make a mess of things. Let's see... This this will burn anyone, so I think that'll burn allies, too. So I don't want to use Fan of Flames on these guys. Let's see... Should I just do magic missiles to not to wail on somebody? Let's focus on the second guy. He's badly injured. What? Durance is going to want to back off, hopefully. Let's try to get him away. Oh, he got knocked down literally the exact second I unpaused. So 
Not much chance to make decisions there. So Durance and Garrix are down. Not the most ideal beginning to this fight. Hopefully they're not going to sit there and try to finish them off or anything like that. Let's see. You're still trying to cast your magic missiles, so we'll just wait. How effective was that? He's still alive, unfortunately. Uh, I'm going to need... Here, you change target to finish off this paladin. And he's going to chase Peril, I think. So Peril, you, get, you, you try to back off. Oh, he's still chasing me. Shit. Okay. Well, at least Adar's target went down, but I'm still being pursued now. Because these guys are being an all-around problem. This has not gone very well for me so far. Hey, buddy. You're up in my face, aren't you? Yeah, that's just not a bad... That's not a good strategy. Let's... I haven't equipped other weapon sets for this character, have I? And I'm about to run out of, out of endurance. We are in trouble. We might have to camp already after this. Let's see here. I forgot about this. My, my plan... I can't do this right now, can I? Ah. I, I, I messed up. My plan was to give Peril a, the two daggers as, an, as alternate weapons for when he gets in melee range. Now I just have to hope that this other character can get him off me in time. So try to knock him down, hopefully. And you cast some nasty spells. All, what's this thing? Uh, Arcane Assault. Two per encounter, speed fast. Unleashes a bolt of magical energy that from a grimoire that inflicts raw damage and dazes targets in the area. It doesn't say enemies specifically, so it might have friendly fire, so we'll have to be careful with that. Let's see. This one's targeted, so I think it's safe to cast directly on the on the paladin. We need to take him out before he takes the peril out. Alright, target destroyed. Now everyone can focus fire on the one remaining enemy. So let's prepare our nastiest abilities. Let's start off by hobbling them with uh, Peril, who is now in a safer position. Uh, you're still casting your spells, so we have to wait for a moment. Let's, let's do our arcane attack. There we go. That did not seem to hurt my character. Oop. Now he's casting against, uh, against Aloth. But Aloth seems to be safe for the moment. Let's see. Aloth killed. Aloth activates arcane assault. Uh, Aloth misses Ludara. Oh, wow. Arcane Assault didn't even hit. Let's try it again, maybe? Specifically focus firing on the enemy combatant. Mm -hmm. You everyone, you, you focus on doing damage here. Yeah. Did I just go down? Uh, Ludara... Did I just get two of my characters taken out just now? Wow. Uh, Ghost Blades grazes, uh... Hits Eloth and Adar. Four damage on Adar, so he's still okay, but Eloth just went down, apparently. So he went from, like, full health to no health, just like that. And it's paused for character death. I don't think that... I don't think character death is being defined properly here, because I'm pretty sure characters die when they run out of hit points, not when they get knocked out. But now I just lost almost everyone in my party is almost down now, so we're... This Lud Ludrana, not an easy target to fight, apparently. Do I have any other tricks I can do? Not really. All I can do is just keep firing at her at this point. I can't really abandon my party here. So hopefully hopefully, uh, my remaining character is hardy enough to survive. I think they are. Ed Edar seems like she's, he's pretty tough. Alright, we've drawn us down. And no one in my party seems to run out of, be out of hit points. They're just knocked out. Specifically, someone used- I think someone specifically used a knockout ability on Garrix, because they lost- z My wolf has lost zero hit points, they're just- he's, he's just unconscious, which is, you know, a better fate than others. I don't want to lose my wolf, he's my best friend. Alright, we're alive. Uh, let's leave slow mode. How's everyone doing, you guys? You feeling good about yourself? I think- I think, I think we could have done better. Ooh! Okay, what are helms for in this game? They don't have stats. I don't understand what's going on there. Is it just a cosmetic thing? It's weird to me that they keep not having stats. Uh, mail armor, higher damage reduction. Looks kind of terrible though, compared to my other good option. Uh, great sword, not that might not be a terrible choice, but I think him having a shield probably helps out here. Let's see, oh, well. This gold-packed paladin Ludrana has a lot of equipment here. So we have, oh. We have her grimoire, that could explain things. Oh, her orders also could explain things. A weird number... She has a weird amount of stacked equipment with male armor and padded armor and a helm. How did she wear both types of armor at once? A large shield? That could be... T that might be good. So that's something to give to her... To good, 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 that, 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 that. that might be good to give to our fighter. Uh, wand. 
mace, hand that off to our melee character just to keep track of. Let's give the text to my main character because we're going to just play a proper role in the fact that he's the leader here. So anyone else to search? No. So that, that might have been an AoE search, might be why so many things showed up there. So, let's make sense of all the crazy shit we have now. So looking at this character, how good is our armor we just found? Probably not great. Yeah, it's going to make me slower. Uh, there's this male armor here that I found, which is... Uh, yeah, it's only one... It's one less than the, than the Brigantine armor. Padded armor is for a light character. I think everyone's pretty much got their starting armor set up. Re robe, so he's got the lightest armor of them all, so he's really soft. Uh, how does the shield compare? So right now I lose 4 accuracy. If I get this, I'll gain I'll gain 4 deflection, but then gain 4 accuracy. Huh. Large shields are used when a warrior needs to the best protection possible, even if that means sacrifices some accuracy in exchange. Though they typically taper like an inverted teardrop, large shields come in a variety of shapes, often emblemized with heraldry. It might be good to give him a bigger shield, because he's the only defensive character right now. His accuracy isn't necessarily as important as, abili as his ability to stave off others. He has a cape. Capes are popular throughout the Eastern Reach. Commonly made of wool or animal pelts, capes provide warmth on cool nights and through deep winters. Yeah, that's what capes are. So, we have a wand. Look into that later. Let's find out what this person's orders are that went, went up and killed us. Because, uh... Uh, we weren't the aggressors, we are just walking through the forest, but maybe they're after us. So, Ludrana's orders. It seems I have no choice but to provide you with instruction. Radric's forces are spread thin, and the road through the wilds to the south of Gilded Vale lies unguarded. Given these favorable circumstances, I am sure that even you can manage to handle a peasant or two. The archers tell me that Kolsk's men uh, made, so made south after their escape. If you should happen to achieve one of their number, I may be convinced to forgive your previous mistakes. For the last time, you are to keep clear of Defiance Bay. Know that if you cannot tr be trusted to acquire a useful specimen with even a modicum of discretion, I have no qualms whatsoever about using whatever materials I have at my disposal instead. Oh. Kolsk's men. We're not Kolsk's men, are we? I'm not sure if we were mistaken for someone else or not. I mean, I'm, I know I'm not Kolsk's men, but uh, I, I can't. I remember Adar mentioning that name, and I'm not sure if, if they were tied together. Ludrana's Grimoire. Ooh! It has spells! That could be fun. Let's give this to our wizard character. See if any of this fun benefits to having this around. So this, my current one has... Uh, dazzling... Wait, what happens if I swap these out? What happens here... Now I switch on this. Ooh, can I learn these? Is that what happens here? I think this plus sign means that I can learn these from scratch for my character. So, let's see. Chill Fog, Ghost Blades. Ghost Blades was strong, let's prioritize that one. I just don't, I'm saying prioritize because I don't know how many you can learn from one book or if you can just learn all of them. It will cost 100 copper for Elf to learn Ghost Blades. Okay, so we have to prioritize things because it costs money. Who am I paying the money to? Because I'm standing in the middle of nowhere. Uh, let's look at these spells. Uh, Fetid Caress. The target becomes paralyzed, afflicted with boiling pustules of foul-smelling liquid that erupt from their skin, sickening those nearby. So it's a... It's a... It looks like it, it targets one enemy, but then it is a radius effect on them. They're paralyzed and sickened. Necrotic Lance. So this was some kind of necromancer type character then. Uh, creates a lance of pure necrotic energy, causing corrode damage instantly and over time. These last two are interesting because they're level 2 spells, which means I could learn them in addition to his current set of spells. Uh, Ghost Blades, this one seemed pretty cool. Uh, calls a field of unearthly blades into existence, and inflicting immediate pierce damage and hobbled affliction on targets in the area of effect. That seemed really handy because they were using it on... she used it on me and it did a ton of damage. Uh, it killed my one of my spellcasters. Chill fog. Uh, calls a blindingly white ice fog into existence, uh, inflicting blindness on anyone entering and freezing damage over time to end in the area of effect. I need to figure out whether or not friendly fire is a thing or not, because I did a spell that did not specify it would hit enemies, and it didn't seem to hurt my main. It didn't seem to hurt my tank at all. So I think there might not be. A, there may not be. Uh. 
There might not be AoE damage. Let's see. Should I go for this car this caress ability or this necrotic lance? Let's see. Allah doesn't know necrotic lance. If you erase it from this grimoire, you won't be able to describe it again. Oh shit! I meant to click the plus sign. Uh, it will cost two hundred, so it costs even more to learn higher level spells. Okay. How much money do I have right now? I need to close this out, don't I? Uh, 249. We are not rich people right now. So let's look at, uh, Ludana's Grimoire. I think I'm gonna learn Ghost Blades real quick, for, even though it's gonna cost 100. That's fine. You've learned a new wizard spell. Remember that you must add new wizard spells to a Grimoire before they're available for you to use. Okay. So I'm gonna leave... Let's see. So now it shows up in his known spells. I'm gonna go ahead and, and un unequip hers and put his back on, because that's where all half his spells are. But now, I can remove one of these things and replace it with the other one. So let's look at these two status effects. There's a dazing ability and freezing ability. And Phantom Flames. I think I'm gonna remove Phantom Flames and replace that with Ghost Blades. It's just a cooler spell. This is a... Uh, this is interesting. We have a lot. To, we have a lot of things to process here. Should I give this helm? Oh, he has two helms. Should I give him a helm? It looks fitting. I don't know if it affects anything. It doesn't. It's not lit. the The helms aren't listed as having any status effects of any kind, so I'm not sure if they're just cosmetic or not. Might have to search that up. Look that up soon. Let's see. A sa Oh wait. First of all, before I forget, let's put my. Let's actually equip my blades so I can switch to them if I feel the need to as a rogue. I'm not- I'm probably not very- I'm not necessarily trained with them at- at dual wielding, but we'll see how that handles. Ideally, I'll just avoid being attacked in such a way. So we- we- we got orders that says she was guarding this path, and we got our grimoire, which means we get new spells! How does this thing compare to this guy's current equipment, by the way? Uh, this wand is... faster... does the same damage, but that doesn't necessarily matter, because why would you hit people with your- that weapon anyway? Uh, what's the difference between a scepter and a wand? Let's see. I want to hear about casting time. As magical implements often lack serious power compared to bows, crossbows, and firearms, the wand's flex flexible damage types help the wizards deal with more heavily armored uh, deal with more heavily armored opponents more easily. Wands are easily distinguished from scepters by their tapered points. Is there a reason to use the wand over the scepter? Scepter's two-handed. Let's see. They have flexible damage types. Is there a reason to use a scepter over a wand, necessarily? Is it also listed as being two-handed? It is two-handed. I think that they're just listed as being two-handed because your other hand is your grimoire. Yeah, I don't know if I'm better off with a scepter or a wand. It's unclear to me. She seemed to kick ass, so maybe I'll just use her weapon for the sake of it, but I think they have the same stats, so I'm not sure if there's actually a difference there. You went down very quickly, and I'm very disappointed in you. I'd be giving uh, about time. I should probably give you a timeout. Uh, this guy's weapon does 14 to 21 slash. He might have an advantage with that type of weapon, though. Oh no, the mace does less damage anyway. So, yeah, he actually does pretty good damage with that weapon in particular. Let's see. Let's compare here. The ba the mace has a base of 11 to 16. This weapon has a base of 12 to 18. Huh. So there doesn't seem to be a specific bonus, so he may not have a specific affinity for the weapon he's using right now, but I'm gonna let him hold on to it for now. So the question is, do I continue on or do I try to rest? No problem. Either way, I should fix my party composition. Because I falsely thought that he was the, uh, I falsely thought that he was the, uh, the melee type. When that's not necessarily the case. I think I, I, think I mixed him up with the monks. When I saw the scepter and everything and didn't see a grimoire, but that's just because the grimoire is not used by that class. So, how are we doing on the map here? We're close to proceeding forward. Maybe I should just try to get to the next area before I deal with uh, trying to camp, because I may not need to if I continue forward. Here we go. Oh, there's next is the Black Meadow. So we're still on our way across. We have more to go through before we get to Kadnua. Take you four hours. Hopefully we don't die horribly in the next area, because holy shit, that got, that escalated quickly.